In this video we're going to be showing how to highlight or use dynamic legends to highlight uh, specific cells within a table. And this is going to go along with this applying legend items uh, CATIA documentation which is going to explain how to apply legend items by condition and applying items to specific cells of a table. And here's what we're going to be building out. We will add this link in the comments. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm doing is right clicking the model package and then doing create element and then requirement or extended requirement. And then I'm typing in the requirement name. Now we are creating a requirements table. This can be a generic table or the one that I selected, which is a requirements table. We're then pulling the scope of the entire model. So it pulls all the requirements within there and we're adding a new column, the risk column. Now we're adding our risk values to each of the requirements. And now we're going through each requirement and adding the text per the example. Now we're fixing the element numbering by right clicking the element and going to numbering and we can add a prefix to add the SR. We're also going to add new header requirements and then we will nest the requirements within it. So for stopping and charging, we're going to nest those, the specific stopping and charging requirements within it so that we can then get the correct numbering scheme. So this is just us fixing the numbering using the increase and decrease as well as the edit uh, features within the element numbering pop-up. Note we have a multi-level numbering scheme. So you'll see that I selected stopping requirement and that's going to allow us to change the numbering for all of the requirements within that stopping requirement. So we're going to do that with the charging requirement as well because there are nested requirements underneath charging. If we then go back up and select the model, then we will see the top level uh, numbering scheme. We'll first note this shortcut button, which will allow you to expand and collapse the structure. We can go into the settings and then down in display mode, we can change it from complete to compact to then the list view. We'd like to see the list view. And then we can go into each of the rows that we don't want to see and then click the remove from table, which removes it from this view, but doesn't remove it from the model. Now I'm just creating a requirements package and putting the requirements in it. Note that the first time I messed up and did a select all with, and then it basically unnested my stopping and charging requirements all to one level, which screwed up the numbering. So then I went back and just selected the high level ones and moved it to the requirements package. It didn't mess up my numbering. Now I'd like to create a stereotype with a new tag value which would be status of type status uh, stereotypes need to live in profiles so that's why i created that profile first and we'll create this enumeration which is basically a list view where you select one so it's going to be either closed approved disapproved or in progress we're now going to type the property which is within the status stereotype which is called status we're going to type it with the status enumeration we're going to select all the requirements and we're going to apply the status stereotype to all those requirements, which will allow the status property to be shown as a tagged value within each of the requirements. Note that the first time when I thought that I had applied that status stereotype, I only applied it to the high level requirements and not the requirements within stopping and charging. So I went ahead and added that stereotype to those nested requirements. We're now going to apply the correct literal, which is going to be closed, approved, disapproved, or in progress to each of the requirements per the example. So now we're going to create a new custom column that's just going to temporarily help us see what the status and risk levels are. This column is optional and will be removed later. It's just there for clarity. Now we are creating our risk legend by selecting the icon in the toolbar and clicking create legend. Then we can right click the risk legend and then do create element and then legend item to create our low, medium and high legend items. We're now going to go into the specification of our legend item and we're going to add adornments. 
Now we can go into our legend item again and apply to specific elements, such as a specific requirement, which highlights that row. We can then use a dynamic legend and then do it by condition and do a type test to be able to filter that way and create that sort of highlight. Note that this elements by condition test, this type test that we're doing is going to be looking at the extended requirements property called risk. And then it's going to look at the value of that risk within each of the extended requirements and determine if that value's value equals medium or equals high, then it will highlight it. So now we'll go into the adorned properties. What that's going to allow us to do is only highlight specific columns within our table, not the entire row. Note that at first we aren't able to find risk, and that's because we cannot see risk because we haven't filtered our elements by condition by the extended requirement. The risk property is only seen in the extended requirement. Therefore, we have to go back to our elements by condition and change the element type to extended requirement so that in the adorned properties, we can actually filter by risk. Note, because we selected risk, now the red highlight is only on the risk column. Now we will repeat this with the medium adorned properties. So we're going in and notice again, we don't see risk and that's because we need to go back to our elements by condition and we need to filter the element type to instead of just element, we need it to be more specific, the extended requirement, which is going to have that tagged risk value. I mean, you can see it here, it's underneath extended requirement, but we need to go back to the adorned properties and now we'll be able to see risk because extended requirements have that risk value. So now we'll just do this again with the low risk value. So now we're going to go in and create our second legend, the status legend. Once we create that status legend, we're going to go in to each of the legend items and create them. So we'll create closed, approved, disapproved, and in progress. And then we will go ahead and add the adornments to give them colors. We're then going to go into each one of the legend items and add the specific elements by condition property test, just as we did before with the risk property tests. You'll notice that just as before the entire row becomes highlighted. So our intention is to go into the adorned properties and only highlight the name and text columns with the status. So we'll notice at first that again, we had the same problem as last time where we are not able to see the name. So we need to go back and specify in the elements by condition, what type of element type that we should use instead of just element, we're going to specify to extended requirement as we did before. So now you'll notice that the first column, the number column and the last column, the untitled column are no longer highlighted. They are white, which means that we are successfully highlighting the name and text column. Now we will repeat this same process for all the different legend items. Now we can remove the custom column that we created earlier for clarity, the unnamed column. We'll save our model and that will change our blue text to black. And we'll notice that our table looks almost exactly like the example. You may notice that um, this is not highlighted as approved as it should be. And if I added a risk value to that, then it is shown. I can add any risk value. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the reason that is, is because of the element type. So it's a requirement right here instead of an extended requirement. When we add a risk value, it changes that R to an E and makes it an extended requirement. And if we remember the status, um, all these status legend items are looking for extended requirement class and not just requirement class. So I think it probably would have been smarter to, if you wanted it to only show one at a time, then you could come back here and change the so this is an accepted requirement. So I'm going to go to the or approved requirement. So I'm going to go to the approved 
pens in. Elements by condition. If I add the normal requirement as well, it will then highlight without having this risk value added. 